Okay guys, example one, solve the equation two times cosine of x over two minus root two is equal to zero. See this argument right here is what I was talking about. Here in part two in, in 6.3 in this section, all of the arguments are like half angles like this or double angles and so forth. We didn't see this kind of thing in the first part. Uh, so, you, so look out for this. But keep in mind we are solving for x here the argument happens to be x over 2, but we're solving for x. And there's two parts to this. We're going to first solve uh, this equation for x over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Okay? That's the first part of this that we're going to do first. And then, um, after we're done with that, we'll go to the second part, which is solve for all solutions. Okay? So let's go for this first part, uh, part A, solving the equation over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Let's go. Okay, my first thought is to isolate the function, um, is to isolate cosine of x over 2. So I'm thinking we should add root 2 to the other side, and when we're done adding root 2, then we'll divide both sides by 2. Okay, when you add root 2 to the other side, then you get 2 times cosine of x over 2 is equal to positive root 2. And then when you divide both sides by 2, you get cosine of, oops, excuse me, you get cosine of x over 2, is equal to root 2 over 2. All right, very good. Now, I want to draw your attention to something um, over here, maybe. Um, we know that we're solving for x, right? And we also know that x has to be between uh, the interval 0 and 2 pi. All right, we know this relationship with x. But the question is, what about x over 2? Where is that coming from? Where does x over 2 live? What's the interval for x over 2? Well, if you divide x by 2, then you should divide 0 by 2, and you should divide, divide 2 pi by 2. So when you divide 0 by 2, you still get 0. And when you divide 2 pi by 2, you just get pi. So when you and I consider answers right now, when you and I consider um, x over 2 and what the possibilities for that argument could be, we can only look at between 0 to pi, basically quadrants 1 and 2. Okay, I can add that. This is basically quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. All right, everybody? All right, cool. Let's move this up. And let's continue. Because of our unit circle, because of our knowledge of our unit circle and how well we know it, in quadrant 1, we know that cosine of x over 2 will be root 2 over 2 if you're taking cosine of pi over 4, right? What I just said right there is, I said if x over 2, if that is pi over 4, I know this will work. Cosine of pi over 4 will be root 2 over 2. Now, in quadrant number 2, um, we don't have an answer. And the reason why is because in quadrant number two, um, cosine values are negative. So this is the only answer I'm going to get. So what I should do here is multiply both sides maybe by uh, two to isolate x, right? Because then you'll get this x, I'm sorry, that two and that two to divide out. And then of course we also know that two um, divides into, I guess I'm using red right now, right? So two uh, divides into four twice right there, right? So what we have then on the left is just x isolated, and we get x is equal to pi over two. All right, everybody? Oh, you know what we should do? Um, we should be a little more formal with our um, final solution. And what I mean by that is let's use set notation. That would be really good. So uh, set notation just means use braces. So our set of solutions is just pi over 2. And you can close your set. That's, that's better than just boxing x equal to pi over 2. Hey, guys, I wanted to bring something up to your attention. Um, you know, when we were over here thinking about cosine of what gives me root 2 over 2, you know, um, Cosine is also positive in quadrant number four, right? Quadrant two, you're negative. Quadrant three, you're negative. But in quadrant four, you're also positive. So watch this. Um, if we let x over two 
b um, 7 pi over 4, this will also work, right? 7 pi over 4. Cosine, I'm, I'm saying that if x over 2, if the argument is 7 pi over 4, cosine of 7 pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2. It seems like it works. However, um, when you solve for x here, watch what happens. Let's multiply both sides by 2, right? Multiply both sides by 2, and you can cross cancel, right? So then this is x is equal to 7 pi over 2. Now what's the problem of that? The problem is this proposed solution is not between 0 and 2 pi. This solution is greater than 2 pi. So this is outside the range, right? <clears throat> so all of this is invalid, which is, which is why I took you down this road over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I said that when we consider our values for x over 2, only look at values between 0 and pi to make sure that you are, at the end of the day, giving an x value that is between 0 and 2 pi. When you and I just pulled an x over 2 value that is in quadrant 4, if when we just considered x over 2 greater than pi, um, our final answer ended up being greater than 2 pi for x. So this, this interval right here is really important, all right? Now for part B, remember it says solve for all solutions? Look at your argument in your equation that you solved. Your argument is x over 2. That implies that, do you remember when we were in chapter 4 graphing our functions? Um, that implies that the period, right, the period, do you remember in chapter 4 saying that the period is 2 pi over b? Well, your b value here is 1 half, right? So your period is 4 pi. That means your function values, your answers, will start to repeat, right, because these are periodic functions, every 4 pi. So let me see if I can give you a, a picture to visualize, all right? Now, one answer turned out to be pi over 2, right, everybody? That was an, an answer. The other proposed solution turned out to be 7 pi over 2. Now, now this is 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. So the other proposed solution that we ended up not being in the, in the correct interval is 7 pi over 2, right? And the other one was pi over 2. Now watch this. Um, what we just figured out with the period being 4 pi is pi over 2 is a solution for this equation. And then you hit another solution when you go, that's 2 pi and 4 pi. Did you catch that? Um, I, could, I could show you this here. When you start with pi over 2 and you go 4 pi, you just hit a brand new solution. If you go to another 4 pi, you get another solution. Go another 4 pi, you get another solution. So there's infinitely many solutions, right? Now watch this. If you start at 7 pi over 2 and go 4 pi, right? Let me, let me start right here, uh, smaller here. Actually, let me uh, go back. If you start at 7 pi over 2 and go 4 pi, there's a solution, right? Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, we threw 7 pi over 2 aside, like we didn't use it. I know, but because in part 1, everybody, if I can scroll up here, ah, uh, there we go. If I can scroll up, in part 1, it was very important that we were only looking at x values that are between 0 and 2 pi. But now in part b, we're solving for all solutions, not just for the solutions that are between 0 and 2 pi, but for all solutions. And one of those solutions that we threw aside, 7 pi over 2, now can be considered because uh, we're solving for all solutions. So, ah, there we go. <laughs> so, um, so th these are our solutions. We're going to write our final answer like this. Set notation. Uh, pi over 2 plus multiples of the, uh, of the period. So it'll be 4n pi 
or n is an integer, okay? And the other solution will be 7 pi over 2 plus 4n pi. <clears throat> Ah, if I could just write this, that'd be good. Okay. All right. Got it. There's our final answer. All right, everybody? Cool. Let's look at the next example. All right, guys. Example two. Solve cosine of 2x is equal to sine x over the interval 0 to 2 pi. There's only one part of this. Um, there's no two-part uh, process to this because they are not asking for all solutions. They're just asking for the solutions that are between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, guys, my first instinct is to work with that left-hand side. It's a double angle. Um, and to make it, um, you know, when I, when I think about my double angle identities for cosine, I remember that there's three different ones. Um, but there is one identity for the double angle identity for cosine. There's one of them that is only in terms of sine. So let me see if I can remind you that... Cosine, this is the original uh, equation. Cosine of 2x is the same thing as 1 minus 2 times sine squared of x. That's what that left-hand side is equal to using a double angle identity. The cool thing about this equation now is that this is all in terms of sine. Everything is in terms of sine. If you set this whole equation equal to 0, I think you'll be in good shape. So you have positive 2 sine squared x. Um, plus sine x, and then minus 1 when you set this equal to 0. All right, cool deal. Now, I think this, uh, this uh, factors, if I'm not mis mistaken, 2 times sine x, and then a sine x here. And I believe we want a plus 1 out here, and then a minus 1 in here. Yeah, that'll work. And then you know from your algebra studies that you set each factor equal to zero and solve, right? When you set each factor equal to zero and solve, over here you will get um, sine of x is equal to one half. Of course, after adding one and dividing by two. And over here, you'll get sine of x is equal to negative one. Okay, now we're just about done, but I want you to think about your unit circle and when is sine positive? When is sine positive? Sine is positive in quadrant one and in quadrant two. That's it, okay? Um, when you think about sine of x equal to negative one, sine is negative one at only one, uh, only one time on the unit circle. So let's go to sine of x is equal to one half. In quadrant one, this will occur if x is uh, pi over six. In quadrant two, this will occur, uh, sine of x will be one half, that is, if x is five pi over six, okay? Um, for this one, uh, over here, sine of x will be negative one, that will be true if x is three pi over two, all right? So in set notation, you'll have pi over six, five pi over six, and three pi over two, and these are your only solutions. There's three of them, okay? It's, the set notation is nice because all your solutions are there written for you. That one was pretty, um, pretty straightforward. I think what was important is the very beginning steps when you were using a double angle identity. All right, look how cool this one is. Example three, solve two times cosine squared of theta minus two times sine squared of theta plus one is equal to zero. Now, solve that for theta First, over the interval, uh, 0 degrees to 360 degrees. And then when you're done with that, solve it for um, all solutions. For all solutions. All right, let's go for um, solutions that are between 0 and 360 degrees. All right, guys, my first initial thought is to factor out... Um, a 2. Let me say this, guys, and this, uh, this uh, applies to probably all of these equations that we've been studying uh, in this chapter, many times there's multiple ways to get to the solution. So by no means am I ever saying that what I'm doing and what I'm showing is the only way to solve the equation. So if you have another idea, go for it. 
um, you're probably right. So give it a shot. But I'm going to factor out a 2, okay? That's what my instinct is saying to do. And then the cool thing about it is that inside of here, inside of the parentheses, I have some an expression that reminds me of one of our identities. Uh, cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta is the same thing as cosine of, yeah, of 2 theta. That's a double angle identity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to isolate cosine of 2 theta by subtracting 1 and then dividing by 2, like that. So I subtracted 1, I moved the 1 over, and then I divided both sides by 2, which gets rid of this 2, not this 2. That's part of the argument, okay? Now, we had a similar conversation um, a little while ago, um, and this is what we said. Um, we know that we're solving for theta here, okay? We're solving for theta. Now watch this. Theta has to be between 0 and 360 degrees. That's what the problem said. But right now, this argument is 2 theta. So when you consider substitutions for 2 theta, you have to multiply... Uh, theta by 2 to get 2 theta. That means you should multiply 0 by 2, which is still 0, and 360 by 2, which is 720 degrees. What does that mean? That means 720 degrees is two, two uh, trips around the unit circle. Right, everybody? So be careful um, that you grab all your solutions and you don't miss any. All right? So here we go. Um, cosine um, is negative, right? Cosine of 2 theta is negative and cosine is negative in quadrants two and, and and three right so when you take one unit one trip around the unit circle you'll find a solution in quadrant two and then you'll find a solution in quadrant uh three right that's when cosine is going to be negative now you and i know our unit circle very well um we know that uh, cosine of two theta will be equal to negative one half if two theta is equal to two pi over three, right? Cosine of two pi over three is uh, negative one half. Divide both sides by two and you'll get uh, theta would be pi over three. Cool? Um, for quadrant three, um, your solution uh, for two theta would be, your substitution would be, uh, 4 pi over 3, right? Check your unit circle. Cosine of 4 pi over 3 is also negative 1 half. Divide both sides by 2, and you'll get theta is 2 pi over 3. Cool? Those are two uh, possible solutions for our um, for our theta value. You know what I just noticed right now? Is that <laughs> the equation asks for degrees. How do I know that? Because of this right here. They're telling you solve for theta in degrees, but I accidentally um, went for radians. Can I fix that? Of course. That's what this eraser is about. So I'm gonna. Uh, you're gonna see me erase. Okay, everybody. Um, I want to change this to uh, two degrees. I guess I want to erase. Hopefully, I can. There we go. Let me change these to degrees really quickly. Okay. Bear with me. Okay, cool. So we said um, cosine of 2 theta will be negative 1 half if 2 theta is 2 pi over 3, which is the same thing as uh, 120 degrees. That's 2 pi over 3. So dividing both sides by 2 gives you 60 degrees. Okay, so there's one answer in degrees, right? And then the other one was uh, 2 pi uh, is 4 pi over 3, which would be uh, 240 degrees. That's two. Uh, that's four pi over three, and when you divide both sides by two, you get one hundred twenty degrees. All right, good. Now I have my solutions in degree mode. Okay, we're not done though, guys. Remember, um, two theta. We're substituting things in for two theta, and two theta has to be between zero and seven twenty. That means so. This is what you've done so far. Here's the visual. Okay, I always go to a visual uh, if I can. Uh, for those that understand a little better um, looking at a picture. So I see that for 2 theta, 
um, we're going to go from 0 to 720 degrees. So far, you've given that 2 theta is 120 and 2 theta is 240. All right, so then what you've given for 2 theta, okay, everybody, is uh, 120 degrees, which is right here, and you've also given 240 degrees, which is right here. All right, those are the two values for 2 theta that you've given. Now remember, 2 theta, though, um, has to go between 0 and 720. So far, you've only given um, substitutions for 2 theta between 0 and 360, right? So this is what I want you to do. Um, what is uh, this? This is 120 degrees, right? Add 360 to that. What's 120 degrees? Here, let me label this. I think it'll be better. Oops, hold on just a second. There we go. What's, uh, this is 120 degrees, and then this is 240 degrees. Oops. Like that. Okay, guys, I started at 120 degrees, and I added one full rotation. So what's 120 degrees plus 360 degrees? 480 degrees. That's right. So then 2 theta can also be 480 degrees. Now watch this. When you divide both sides by 2 you get that theta is or can be 240 degrees. That's another solution. Now watch this if you can, if it's not too hard to see. If you start at 240 and you go all the, add one full rotation to it, what is 240 plus 360? 600 degrees, that's right. So two theta can be 600 degrees, which of course means when you divide both sides by 2, that theta is, um, well, theta is 300 degrees, okay? So I, I don't want you to lose um, all four of your solutions. All four of your solutions are theta is 60 degrees, theta is 120 degrees, theta is 300 degrees, and theta is 240. Notice that all four of these answers are for theta, and all four of them are between 0 and 360. If we had not considered a, a 2 theta, the interval for 2 theta, to be between 0 and 720 degrees, please, please notice we would have lost this solution, and we would have lost this solution, right? We would have only gotten these two. So here's your final answer, okay? In set notation, 60 degrees, comma, 120 degrees, comma, 240 degrees, comma, 300 degrees. These are all of your solutions, all right, uh, for theta between 0 and 360 degrees only. Okay, guys, now for the second part, we want to solve for all solutions. Now, um, Look at the argument of the equation that we solved. The argument was 2 theta. Now, it didn't, it didn't turn out to be, I mean, it wasn't 2 theta in the, in the original question. Here, let me scroll up so you can see it. In the original, uh, here's the original right here, folks. The original is here. Uh, it wasn't 2 theta to start out with, but with our substitution, we ended up solving for 2 theta right, 2 theta. That's what we were solving for after our manipulations. So when we solve for all solutions, notice your argument is 2 theta, which implies the period, right, I'll just write P for period, is 2 pi over B, which is 2, so then it is pi. Uh, that's the same thing as 180 degrees, right? I forgot that we're in degree mode, right? 180 degrees. Now, um, let me scroll up a little bit so you can see our solutions from the first part, okay? Now look at this. One solution is 60 degrees. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> one solution is 60 degrees, okay? This one is 60 degrees, okay? And another one is, watch this. Another one is uh, 240 degrees. I'll talk about the other ones in just a second. Now watch this. Your period is... Uh, 180 degrees. So watch this. If we start with 60 degrees, that's one of our solutions, 
and we move 180 degrees from there, we hit another solution, which is 240 degrees. If we go 180 degrees from there, we hit another solution. 180 degrees, another solutions, because these are these are periodic functions. Another 180 degrees, another solutions, An another solution. Another 180 degrees, another solution. Another 180 degrees, another solution. Another 180 degrees, another solution. In other words, I hope what I've uh, really, really made clear is that why don't you just start with 60 degrees and go multiples of 180 degrees from there, and you'll generate all of your solutions, all in terms of 60 degrees, plus any multiple of 180 degrees. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, what we can start right, we can start writing our final answer like this: 60 degrees. Uh, plus any multiple of 180 degrees times n, right? n is an integer, okay? Now, watch this. Now I'm going to draw you another uh, picture. All right, I've, I've edited the picture to show 120 degrees and 300 degrees. Now, remember, your period is 180 degrees. If I start with 120 degrees and I move from there, I add um, the first multiple of 180 degrees, I get 300 degrees, the other solution. If I go another 180 degrees, I get an answer that is coterminal with 120 degrees, which is another solution. Go another multiple of 180, a brand new solution, another solution, another solution, another solution, another solution, and so forth and so forth. So what I'm hoping to show you is that let's start with 120 degrees and then just move multiples of 180 degrees from there, all right? So in other words, we can finish off our solution by saying, our, our solution set by saying 120 degrees plus multiples of 180 degrees. All right, so this is our final solution set. Cool, you guys. Let's look at one last example, um, and then I think we'll be good. All right, solve the following equation over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Now, this is the equation, this is the equation that they want you to solve for. Uh, x cotangent of 2x um, minus cosecant of 2x. Um, can you hear that motorcycle driving by? <laughs> is equal to 1, okay? Uh, is equal to 1. Cotangent of 2x minus cosecant of 2x um, is equal to 1. Now, my initial thought, guys, is that um, there's a identity that puts cotangent squared and cosecant squared in a relationship. So my first idea is to square this thing so that I can use that identity uh, to my advantage here. Um, but before I square, I think it'll be better if I, if I isolate one of these functions, if I either isolate cotangent of 2x or cosecant of 2x. I think what I'll do is I'll isolate cotangent of 2x by adding cosecant of 2x to the other side. All right, so then I'll, ha I'll have cotangent of 2x is equal to cosecant of 2x plus 1, like that. And then I'll square both sides. So I'll square this side, and I'll be very careful to square this side. Okay, when I square the left-hand side, that just means cotangent squared of 2x, all right? When I square the right-hand side, I get cosecant squared of 2x plus 2 times cosecant of x, Oh, excuse me, 2 times cosecant of 2x, and then plus 1. Now, the cool thing is now um, I can replace the left-hand side using one that Pythagorean theorem that I mentioned, this one. This one here, cotangent squared of a plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared of a. That implies that cotangent squared of a is the same thing as cosecant squared of a minus 1. So I'm going to substitute now into my equation on the left-hand side. That means the left-hand side is the same thing as cosecant squared of 2x minus 1 is equal to all of this on the right-hand side. Okay, and I got it all.
Okay. Now this is the this is the cool thing here. Um, notice that you got cosecant squared of 2x on the left hand side, cosecant squared of 2x on the right hand side, and so this whole equation is written now in terms of just cosecant of x, cosecant of 2x. I'm gonna um, subtract one from both sides. When I subtract one from both sides, I get negative two is equal to two times cosecant of 2x. When I divide both sides by two, I get negative one is equal to cosecant of 2x. Man, this thing started off to be a lot and then it turned out to be not that much, right? Um, if cosecant of 2x is equal to negative one, that means sine of 2x is equal to the reciprocal of negative one, which is also negative one, right? What I used here, that's a double arrow, um, what I used there is um, the reciprocal identity. Now, I hope you're used to this now. Um, we want to solve for x, and x is between 0 and 2 pi, right? But at the moment, we have the argument 2x. So that means 2x will be between 0 and 4 pi, right, when you multiply everything by 2. So remember that when you're substituting things in for 2x. All right, so here we go. Um, sine of 2x will be negative 1. Yes, it will if 2x is equal to 3 pi over 2. Um, um, uh, sine of 2x, excuse me, will also be equal to negative 1 if 2x is equal to 7 pi over 2. There. Those are the two solutions that are between 0 and 4 pi. Now what I want you to do is a little arithmetic when you divide both sides by 2. Remember dividing both sides by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. This becomes x is equal to 3 pi over 4. And over here becomes 7 pi over 4. Like this. All right, so these are proposed solutions. The reason why I said they are proposed solutions is because we squared both sides. So it's it's possible that <clears throat> that one of these is extraneous. So we should probably check our uh, our work here. So bear with me as I walk you through checking these two solutions. Now the original equation is what you should be plugging these into. Okay, this is the original equation, and I'm plugging in three pi over four. It gives you cotangent of 3 pi over 2 minus cosecant of 3 pi over 2. And supposedly this is equal to 1. That's what you and I want to confirm. Now cotangent of 3 pi over 2 is just 0 minus, and then cosecant of 3 pi over 2 is equivalent to sine of, uh, um, uh, is the excuse me cosecant of 3 pi over 2 is the reciprocal of sine of 3 pi over 2 and sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 and cosecant is the reciprocal of that the reciprocal of negative 1 is just negative 1 I stuttered there sorry if I confused you so 1 is equal to 1 this definitely checks out what I would invite you to do is to plug in 7 pi over 4 and confirm that it checks out All right, by now you should show that, um, you should have seen that both of these check out. So your final answer, when I say they both check out, I mean that they both satisfy the original equation. So your final solu solution set is 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. All right?